The book is called Barack Obama's America, How New Conceptions of Race, Family, and Religion Ended the Reagan Era. Catholic University professor John Kenneth White is the author. Professor, let's begin. Tell us about the cover of this book. The cover was done by an artist in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and I had nothing to do with the uh, cover, but it works so well for the book because it is the uh, photographs of people who attended Obama rallies in 2008, and you have a mixture of, you know, white, black, Hispanic, men, women, you name it. Uh, there's even a couple of pictures in there, I think, of, of Al Gore, and you have to really search for them. But it, it describes, I think, visually the uh, changes in the demography of the United States that led to uh, Barack Obama's election. The picture of Obama is actually one that was taken on election night of 2008. Professor, one of the first things you say in this book is that this is a book about discomfort. Yes. What do you mean? Uh, because I think that the changes that are taking place in the United States create a certain level of discomfort among some Americans. We certainly see it with the Tea Party. I mean, they're uncomfortable with the demographic changes that are taking place in the United States. They're uncomfortable with the changes in family relationships. They're uncomfortable about uh, uh, homosexuals and gay relationships and gay marriage and so forth. And I think Americans have understood that these changes that have taken place in the country are here to stay but for some Americans, it creates this discomfort because there's a sense of loss, a loss of what America used to be, uh, a loss of that 1950s America, a loss of a time when rules, put it bluntly, were clear about you know, marriage and family and work. Um, just even on that work side of it, the loss of um, control that Americans have. The, what I mean by that is, you know, in the 50s and 60s, if you work for a company, you work for them for 25 years, and you got the gold watch at, when you retired. Now we have Americans transitioning from one job to another to another. So all of these changes, uh, I think, create a certain level of discomfort. What about on the liberal side? Where's the discomfort? Um, I, well, I think some of that discomfort is... <sighs> There, there really isn't a discomfort when you come to things like gay marriage, for example. Although, when the book was done, President Obama back in 2008, 2009, was not a supporter of gay marriage. He was uncomfortable with this subject. It was something that he avoided right up until the election of 2012. I think that discomfort is, is receding. I think there's still an unease among liberals about well, what about the nature of family uh, in the United States today? We have, you know, kids being brought up by single moms or by single dads or by grandparents and so forth. And I think that there's a longing for stability in, in relationships. Um, I don't sense that there's a discomfort in terms of saying, well, these relationships are, are wrong. I think there is discomfort on the conservative side of it, as I mentioned. but. But I think, there's, I, I think there's still this kind of unease as we sort of grapple with these changes that are taking place uh, in the country. You also write that there's similarities between Ronald Reagan and Barack Obama's election. There, there are, because a um, couple of things. First, um, Ronald Reagan's election really uh, signaled a very significant change in American politics. And years ago, I wrote a book called The New Politics of Old Values. And what Ronald Reagan emphasized were family, work, neighborhood, peace, and freedom. And Reagan put the Democrats on the defensive. One in four Democrats voted for Ronald Reagan in 1980, 1984. And Reagan's election begins uh, a Republican ascension, or commences, really, a Republican ascension to the presidency. Um, Reagan's America was really about uh, Unyoung, unpoor, unblack, white, middle-aged, middle-come, suburban Americans really gravitating to Ronald Reagan, who wanted this restoration of order, if you will. And the person who understood that best, ironically, is Barack Obama. 
Uh, Obama actually wrote once about Reagan's election and Reagan's appeal that it was an appeal for order. Uh, Obama noted that he had seen the military bases in Hawaii and the men and women in their crisp uniforms and so forth. And he thought that was an essential part of Reagan's appeal. He's quite right about that, actually. What's happened now is when I was a teenager, there was a book called The Real Majority. And The Real Majority was described as being unyoung, unpoor, and unblack. And so I kind of grew up thinking, well, OK, that's the real majority in the United States. That's, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's uh, that's the electorate that, uh, that, uh, that elects presidents. That, uh, that real majority today is the real minority because white, middle income, middle class, middle age, suburbanite, uh, that's a real minority now in American politics as these demographic changes have taken uh, place. And so the old rules about politics and how you elect presidents and what you need to do to win elections and who is going to be part of that new majority coalition. All of that's been completely upended now uh, by Obama's election. And the shifts in demography in the country really point to that. That old book, The Real Majority, uh, had a saying that demography is destiny. And it was true back in 1970 when that book was written. I think it's equally true now. So when you look at the, our changing demographics, in the U.S., what do you see and what do you portend sure. uh, politically? Well, uh, the big changes in demography are first deal with race, and that would be a big subject by itself. But whites will be a minority in the United States by 2050, maybe even earlier. Some think it might happen as soon as 2042, but certainly in the lifetime of my uh, daughter, who's 16, she will live in an America where she will be a minority. And by the way, as I write, that's true increasingly in the school, uh, public schools that she attends and so forth. We see Hispanics by 2030, you know, being a third of the uh, American electorate. That is a huge shift in American politics. And when you look at uh, the elections of 2008 and 2012, we see those shifts already coming into play. Hispanics were 10% of the electorate in 2012. That is a big jump when they were less than 1% of the electorate back in 1980 when Reagan was elected. Um, in 2008, the electorate was 74% white. In 2012, it was 72% white. And that number continues to go down. And both of those numbers were the lowest ever at that point when they were recorded in the history of the exit polls. And we can probably look at an election in 2016 where we may find that 70% of the electorate uh, is white. We can go to states like California and Texas, uh, Florida be another, big states where we're talking about uh, you know, majority minority states. Uh, and we can project that out in time and see more and more how uh, uh, our country is changing. And when you change that dramatically, it changes how we think about race. You know, way back in uh, the 60s and 70s, we thought about race in, in, in very simple terms of white or black, although it was never that simple. Um, now, when we th think of race, we can think of it as a kind of slippery slope. Uh, Newt Gingrich uh, was a leader in changing federal forms so that people could list more than one race on a form. And in the 2010 census, people could list more than one race. There were 19 different racial categories in the uh, census. And so how people define themselves, what race is, has kind of become a very slippery slope in American politics. Republican candidates tend to win the majority of the white vote and lose big time right. African American, Hispanic, et cetera. And you know, this is a lesson that, uh, that Republicans, I, I, I think I, I'm frustrated because I think that if you talk to Republican establishment figures, think of former RNC chairs like uh, uh, Ed Gillespie, now running for the Senate in Virginia, 
Ken Melman, the RNC chair under George W. Bush, 